So yesterday I spoke about some ways that we can make sure that we're seizing the opportunity to make every day an opportunity to draw close to God's presence, to be with him, to be fully able to receive all that he wants to give to us. And this morning we're focusing on our calling to worship, even when we don't feel like doing that. Talking about worship, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well, which we read about in John chapter 4, verses 1 to 24, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. And these days, more than any that most of us have ever experienced in our lifetimes before, are times when we need to be attentive to Jesus' direction that he's given in these verses. To say that we must worship God in spirit, among other things, means that our worship must originate from within our hearts. So our worship is to be sincere and motivated by our love for God and by that true and total gratefulness that we have for all that he is and for all that he's done for us. Now is the time for us to worship in our homes or gardens or if that's not possible for us to be worshipping when we go on our daily walks and to do that in a way that's spontaneous as an overflow of our love for him. As well as being in spirit, Jesus said that our worship is to be in truth. This, especially at this traumatic time, is much easier for us to understand, as it means that we're to worship God in view of the truths relating to who he is. Even though there's so much sadness and suffering going on in the world, we know that we um, can worship God for who he is. We would never want to make light of what's going on right now, but we can worship the Lord nevertheless because of who he is, what he has done and because of what he is like. Our worship must be intertwined with the realities of what we know of God, what we know of him in scripture and what we experience of him as we journey together with him each day of our lives. It's likely that for many reasons at the moment, we don't feel like we want to worship. We don't want to turn to worship Jesus in spirit and in truth and to exalt our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit. For the days when we feel tired, bored of staying in, angry or overwhelmed with sadness of all, about all of that uh, heartbreaking news that we keep on hearing about, we know that through all of this, Jesus understands. We know this because when his friend Lazarus died, Jesus himself wept. Our Lord Jesus is our saviour and our supreme friend who holds us in his loving arms by the power of the Holy Spirit. He embraces us to comfort us. As we decide to praise him in the storm of these days, we can experience ourselves in solidarity with his unfailing compassion for all people. As we decide to worship him with our lips and with our whole lives, we'll find that rest for our souls that we really need. We'll know that comfort and more and more we'll feel convicted that he's the one who is strengthening us when we most need to know the power of that strength. A song by Casting Crowns that's inspired by Psalm 121 puts it like this. I remember when I stumbled in the wind. You heard my cry, you raised me up. My strength is almost gone. How can I carry on if I can't find you? As the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain. I'm with you. And as your mercy falls, I raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. 
and I'll praise you in this storm and I will lift my hands for you are who you are no matter where I am and every tear I've cried you hold in your hand you never left my side and though my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm I lift my eyes unto the hills where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth I lift my eyes unto the hills where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth so to sum up these moments that we've spent reflecting on the truth that God is the one who restores us as we worship him I just pray for us now for a moment living Lord Jesus thank you that you understand that there are days when we don't feel like worshipping you maybe sometimes because of sadness frustration or sometimes through apathy and we say that we're sorry and that we want to commit again to worshipping you in spirit and in truth you are amazing lord you've won the victory over the grave and help us to never forget that it's because of you that one day suffering will be completely finished everything will be made new Lord you are so great in the whole universe Amen and so I'll join you again tomorrow I hope that you have a really good rest of the day as you remember to exalt the Lord to worship him in spirit and in truth.